Welcome back. Today, we are going to be finishing up this beauty of a build I've kind of had underway in the background for quite some time now. Not sure what it was going to end up as, so it's just kind of developing as I went. But I think today is the day I bring you in on it. So I think we're going to take a closer look, see what I've got here, and then maybe actually finish this build out. Okay, so let's dive right in here. So this build obviously originated around this MoFo RC titanium flamed UAF chassis. So that was uh, basically the color inspiration, obviously, and it started to develop from there. So uh, I went to KTEC RC for my uh, colored aluminum here. So I picked up the teal that really uh, picks up this uh, teal on the flame. There's a lot more of it on this side of the chassis, but uh, you can see that works really well there. And initially I had their KTEC uh, flat skid here on the bottom in teal, but in mocking this up, I had some issues with the lower links and uh, clearance here. These are Maz Designs titanium links. And you can see they've got a high offset pivot head here. So with uh, the lowers and the uppers in the same plane, you can see how extreme that angle is there. So there was a collision there with the flat skid. So this traditional skid has the lowers, you know, of course they're dropped down. So there's no conflict with the uppers. So that was the swap out there. So I lost the teal and went to purple here, but I, uh, I kind of like the mix and match, works well with the frame colors. So again, I uh, followed that up here with the color of the front link. And this is again, one of my favorite new items here, this uh, roller bearing steering link from 3Flow9. So very, uh, very nice little system here, a lot of adjustability and you can see, in fact, I've lengthened this uh, drag length with some of those Injora spacers there. You can unthread the link. So I wanted to get that horn straight down. So I needed a little more length there. And uh, you can also adjust your toe in, toe out, which is really nice. So the reason I went with this, uh, besides all those nice features, is because with these axles, which are Injora plus fours, I end up doing something to really uh, upgrade the front end here. So the steering is not very good on these out of the box. They only come with dog bones and there to this date has not really been anything offered. So I only had one other set of these, but uh, recently I've gotten into the XO CBDs. So those guys offer like 55 degrees of uh, steering throw. So they make a set for the Enjora Plus 4s and I've got those guys swapped in and you can see the uh, insanity here let me pick this up but that is just crazy so to get that out of these you do have to do a little modification and you can see that here i really took a dremel to those axle ends and ground those very acute basically made those look like a stock super eight so they give you plenty of clearance there so i can rest basically on the axle and I'm still clearing the diff because of this nice steering link. So it's a great way to get so much more out of those Enjora Plus 4 axles. So now these are one of my favorite axles, I think, because the width is not just insane, but once you get those uh, exos in there, the steering is perfect. So it gives you a little more width and just steering that is just unrivaled. So just a great setup there for the uh, axles. And then I guess moving on up, We've got those uh, sprung here to the frame with Hard Park's new uh, colored versions here. So they used to only offer their shocks in red and black. So now they offer multiple colors. So I picked up the purple to go with the frame, of course. And then these have the nice revolving carbon sleeve. So if you get into these with your tire, it won't unthread your shock, of course. I've got this set up so nicely, I am not hitting this, even with this extreme turning. But uh, that's what that's designed for. So a nice little feature there. And then these come with multiple springs. I've got, I think, the shorties in here and the front and rear. They come with some longer ones as well. But uh, nice stance there, sitting nice and low. I've got some rubber bands on each side and one down the center 
to tuck the front end and keep that low. And speaking of the front end, to round that out, we've got MoFo RC's original Servo Beast, or not original, I guess just not the brass one. So the same components, just about half the weight of that brass case. So just a massive Servo. I believe I've got the uh, box here. Let's take a look at these specs. So I'll be running this guy up at 8.4 volts. So we can get the full potential out of this guy, 158 ounce inches. So just a great little servo here, highly recommend it. And then uh, I guess moving on from there to the uh, heart of this thing, we've got another purple component. We've got MoFarC's ROP pancake motor, and I've got his motor mount as well. And we've got that hooked up to a Lizard Ultimate and then a FlySky micro four channel receiver here. So very nice little compact setup. And uh, one of the goals here was to not have any side trays because I didn't want all my junk sitting out there blocking the view of this frame. So it was trying to get it all here compact. So I ended up using uh, the little plastic tray that comes with the UAF kit. I did have to chop that down a little bit to get clearance for that motor but it still gave me plenty of space to mount these two little components here. And then uh, you can see I've got some magnets glued on here as well, thinking about uh, the body, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. You can see here the last little thing in the electronics. I went ahead and set this up like I'm doing now pretty typically for a 3S or a 2S battery. So it doesn't matter. Don't need to switch out the plug, just whatever you have charged up, ready to go. And then for the, uh, I guess the last thing here, the wheels and tires. These beauties are OGRC's kind of flamed look as well. I don't know, these probably aren't titanium, but you get that same nice rainbow look. And then I'm rounding those out with the purple and Jorah scale hubs. And then I've got uh, some pretty nice tires wrapped on these guys. I went with the new J Concepts Megalithics. So these are 63 millimeter. And these guys are made out of gold, apparently. There's some pricey tires, 25 bucks for two of these guys. So I'm running the foams they came with. Of course, the wheels are vented, so these feel really nice. But that is kind of the base setup right here. And uh, only thing that I kind of changed direction on was I was originally gonna maybe flame these titanium links from Maz to kind of match but A, I've never done that before. B, I don't have a torch. So C, I got in a hurry. So I went ahead and mounted those guys up. Little adjustment there you can see on the front to give me a little bit better caster. It's one thing I really like about these links is you can thread them out. So a uh, nice bit of fine tuning there. But that basically uh, is the chassis setup right there. And I've done something really odd that I never do. I've built this whole thing up, gotten this far without doing any testing actually. Of course I, you know, free spun components by hand tested, but I have not hooked anything up to really test it at all. So we're gonna do that as well, but you know me, as every build of mine, we always have multiple uh, options for wheels and tires. This will be no different. So we're gonna have some alternates to look at, but the body, I guess, is the next thing to talk about here. So I've been on a kind of a UAF chassis kick lately and they work really well with the uh, Atlas 6x6 Power Wagon cab body. You need a lot of width right here with these UAF chassis because of the battery tray, the, just where it sits. So some of the skinny bodies, you have some trouble right here. So that, that cab is nice and wide. It hinges really nice back here, but you can see the way I set this up, I wouldn't be able to use that hinge and then again, the way this developed, it started turning into more of a kind of a comp rig setup. And with that thought, um, I was trying to keep it a little more narrow, I think overall. And that Atlas Power Wagon body is pretty wide, even if you do cut off the fenders. So thinking of something that might work and be a little narrow, I had some extra Power Wagon bodies. These are actually Pro-Line Power Wagon bodies, but I bought these before to actually steal some of the Power Wagon branded decals off to use on the Atlas builds. So I had some of these sitting around, so I figured why not cut it up and experiment a little bit. So this is what I got here. So very nice and narrow body here, about as narrow as you can get. 
and then you can see I went to town cutting this thing up and the goal here was really to show off as much of this frame like I said um, before so no side trays so I really wanted to get this body kind of sitting up high I took off some of the bottom here I was tempted to take off more of the door but I thought it would be a little wacky looking so you, you get a little frame coverage but I popped it up here on the rear to give you all that view as much as you could in the front there so man I think that just looks super killer so that kind of explains my magnet location so one there on the back of that lizard ultimate and then uh, one on each side of the battery tray so super easy and uh, nice hold of course if you shake it if you shake it you break it but I don't think it's uh, gonna pop off too easily and if it does seats easily there's no hinge so if it pops off it pops off nothing's gonna really tear up but uh, you can see here the one little bit, bit of scale detail is uh, the grill and this is another little item from adaptive designs they're on Etsy or I guess eBay as well nice little 3d print shop but uh, that added a nice little piece to this body, which is fairly plain. Another little thing I did on this body was on the windows. They're all actually molded. So when you put the sticker on, it's really hard to get rid of air bubbles, get these guys to sit flat. So after I put these on, before I put the, you know, the windshield wiper stickers, I went ahead and cut out the plastic sticker, you know, over the clear part. So these now look crystal clear and basically just left the trim around kind of the raised part of the windows, but it looks much better and there's none of that kind of sticker bubble that you typically get. The uh, rear window, I think I did the same there, but yeah, you can see they're all kind of raised and molded. So just a little note there that might get your windows looking a little bit better, but uh, that's where we are thus far. So I think, as I said, we've got a little bit more work to do. I think I'm gonna break out the paints I used, show you that, kind of talk about the process of how I got this really cool green to purple fade here. But uh, overall, just super sick so far, really happy with it. Haven't weighed it, like I said, haven't hooked it up, haven't bound the electronics. So we're gonna go all through that you know, together that kind of discovery process. So there may be a little more tuning, but so far I am loving this thing. I don't know about you. I think it's already a success and I've got some ideas of where this guy may be going. Look at that paint job, man, that is just gorgeous. So I've got the, uh, the starting point here below it, but I just had to, uh, man, get this in the nice light here. It's just insane. So this thing just looks different every direction you look at it. Just came out great. But you can see here, started with actually quite a bit more Lexan. So these Proline bodies, you've got to trim yourself. So it's kind of fun, um, leaves it up to the imagination. But uh, nice starting block here. So I've still got another one, like I say, these have come in handy to rob the power wagon decals from but uh back to this one and the paint job so this is ps46 so this is uh let's see if this will focus in here iridescent purple green so unfortunately they didn't have a purple to teal but like i said i've got something in mind for this and the green may work just fine in the end so using this iridescent paint you have to back it with the black or maybe like a super dark gunmetal to get it to pop. And when you're spraying this, like I put on maybe three or four coats, it still looks basically clear. Like you're not, you know, it almost is deceptive, but uh, as you can see, it came out just beautiful here. So two or three coats, four coats was perfect. And then uh, backed it with this, left, uh, you know, some open here for the bed and then uh, the sides, Got the PS12 here for a little bit of pop here because I knew I wanted some sponsor stickers. So I've got some Maz, 
I've got some Majora, I've got some Hard Park representing. We've got uh, Mazweiser on the back. We've got Mofo RC, of course, and then Proline for the body. If K Tech made a sticker, it would be on here. I think that's the only thing that's not represented in Fury Tech. They don't have stickers ever included in their stuff, but uh, partial sponsor truck. And then the last little detail, haven't really spoken of, but uh, something that I like to do on these uh, ROP SMP builds is be able to see those guys. So you can see I added that uh, viewing window on this guy as well. I did that on my SMP Atlas and my ROP Atlas as well. A little different location. So I pop this guy on here. So with this setup, it basically sits right above that motor. So pretty nice uh, view right through there to that guy spinning. And then of course, you're gonna see most of it spinning there from the side. And of course you can kind of see it there from the back as well. But I thought that was a cool little detail. Definitely makes this build pop. But uh, I think that is basically the paint body overview. Other than the simple paint work, it was just some creative trimming and uh, once I got this thing done, got it mounted, painted, looking at it, I was like, man, this thing kind of came out looking like the, uh, what is it, the C LMT, what is it, the King Sling, or the Bog Hog, it's the Bog Hog, I believe, it has kind of the winged back, I think that's the one. But uh, that was not on purpose. That just is kind of the way this ended up. I basically wanted to expose the rear of this, but I needed to keep some spot to mount to. And uh, that's kind of what inspired this. Just figured I'd get a little bit of wheel well arch and then chop it. But like I say, it's kind of bog hog-esque unintentionally. But uh, anyways, let's move on. We've got some uh, wheels and tires to look at, but I think before we do that, we're gonna get it on the scales, weigh it up. These rings are brass on here, weighted, see where it sits, and then that may see how we uh, address tuning the next set of wheels and tires. All right, so with the weights in, as you saw in the photos, empty, we were 396 with the stock battery, bumped it to 420, and with the heavier 3S, I guess that's a 450 E-Flight, bumped it to 440. And with empty and the stock battery, we set at 5644 front bias, and we jumped up to 57 front bias with this heavier battery, which is a nice feature of having a front-loaded battery on a build, I really like that. So starting out pretty good and not super heavy overall for the build. There's not much brass on here. The axle assemblies are all aluminum. Really, it's just the brass wheel rings that are in here right now. And then that battery weight is giving us uh, some of that bias. Of course, this build is a little more middle loaded because all the electronics are sitting here behind the motor. Typically, I have those on the sides and a little more forward. But the battery, of course, is going to help that weight. Um, one thing that I've noticed about these cab onlys, it's kind of tricky getting those to 6040 because the rear end becomes too light. So a lot of times you have to back them off to a 58 front bias. So we're sitting pretty good right now, but uh, it's got me thinking about these alternate wheels I've got in mind here. So these are the new Enjora 1.3s, or they were new when I got these a little while back, but these are turbines. And this version you can see has kind of that rainbow flamed outer lip. So really nice, but they are, like I say, 1.3s, so quite a bit larger than these uh, 1.0s that are on here. Let me pull this up here, see if I can lean it up and get a little better comparison. But you can see these are quite massive compared to the 1.0s. So I'm not sure of the tires yet. It may be dependent on what fits up on these nicely, but uh, with this setup, and uh, 
the steering and the way the body's cut and then this battery tray edge. I've still got some room to grow with these uh, 63s. So these are full compression. So even at full twist, I've still got clearance there. So I could go larger than 63s. I could also go wider. I'm not even into my shock body yet. So I think I've got uh, a lot of good options as far as size on the tires. It may just be dependent on what stretches up on these, like I say. But another option I've got for these are some brass rings. So these already feel, well, they're not super heavy, but they are larger. So they are probably heavier than a typical 1.0. So the thought is I may just weight the front and uh, see if that can push us a little further in the bias. I don't know. I think the first thing I'm gonna get out my wired scales and I'm gonna throw these components on there, see where we sit now, maybe pull off one of these wheels, see where that OGRC sits, and then that'll give me some kind of basis to go from. But uh, looks like it's gonna be a really cool looking set of wheels. I'm excited to see what it looks like on there. And then, uh, of course, like I said, there's no brass on here, so there's always some more tuning options for the diff cover, even the knuckles, but uh, it'd be nice to save some money, save these aluminum parts and actually use them since they came with the axles. So the first step I think is gonna just see what we can do with the wheels. All right, let's see what we're working with here as far as weights. So let's take this uh, stock or the existing, not stock, but existing wheel tire combo Unfortunately, I didn't weigh that rim by itself, so this is all we're working with. So 40, basically 41 grams wheel and tire and brass ring. So this is the new guy, 1.3 aluminum. So that right there, 25 on its own. So let's just put a tire on here to get something comparable. So 36 versus 41, so we're almost as heavy right there just being all aluminum. So when we add the brass ring to this assembly, wow, that's gonna really push us up there. So about 63 grams. So if we put 63 grams on all four corners, that's definitely gonna throw our front bias off and take us a little bit more to the rear since these are all heavier. I'm just gonna look at what this ring is on its own. So shoot, that's almost as heavy as the, that's heavier than the wheel. 27 grams for the ring, 25 for the wheel. So that's a lot of weight right there. <clears throat> so I think knowing this, I'm just gonna add the brass rings to the front for these 1.3s and have maybe 2% more. It could put us at 59% front bias, maybe 60. See what that does. It's still gonna have fairly heavy wheels in the rear as we saw with just uh, aluminum in the tire will be at 36. So. I think I'm gonna start with that setup for this uh, wheel uh, combo. Still don't know the tire. This one is not, I don't think what I'm gonna use, but uh, just needed something to weigh it. But that's kind of the stats, what we're working with. So I'm gonna get something mounted up and see what we end up with here. Look at that. So after some bit of struggle, at least on the first tire, I got these guys stretched around the 1.3s ended up going with the Power Hobby Mud Boss tires. He used the stock foams and of course those uh, rims, the rings are vented and then uh, brass in the front only. But look at those, they just look fantastic. They all look a little bit different in the coloration and of course the different angle you get a different color. So man, just killer looking. They ended up stretching on here looking really nice. Um, given a, not, a, lot, a lot of sidewall here, bulge, which is nice, and uh, not too stiff with these being vented. But overall, man, I think they came out looking really nice. Look at that one, just super teal. Should have gotten that one on the other side with all the teal. But uh, wow, just fantastic. So, you know, word of, word of warning is, uh, Take your time getting the rear ring on the tire. You really have to stretch the back face. Once you get this uh, front face popped in, you do that first, that's fairly easy. And I'd also recommend getting some saliva on the bead of the tire. That really helps kind of slipping those uh, rings in there. But like I say, you've got to stretch the back of the tire 
down so tight around the back edge of the ring. It's, it looks like you're pushing something through a balloon. It's just insane, but you can get it on there and uh, it's seated up nice and even on both sides all the way around. I only up, ended up doing uh, one tire twice and I probably could have left it, but it was bugging me. It was just barely not perfect on the front face, but uh, overall a little more of a struggle than typical mounting on 1.0s, but uh, I just didn't want to step up to the 1.3 size tires. All of those seem to be in the 70s and that would have been way too big. And speaking of that, these are almost too big. They do hit the battery tray just barely, but I'm going to clip the uh, bottom of it similar to what I did on the top edge here. You can see I took off that square edge and just chamfered it a little. So I'm going to do that to the bottom and that should take care of that little bit of uh, tire hang up there. But other than that, no clearance issues. But like I say, just super happy with this set. So I think uh, let's get these guys on the scales, see what these super heavy wheels in the front did to the whole bias. But uh, they definitely work for the look, that's for sure. As you saw, looks like uh, the brass rings in the front only was the right decision. So I think empty, what, this was at a 5941, and then I think with either battery, it bumped it up to a 6040. So perfect right there on this guy. But as always, if, you, if you're familiar with my builds, two sets of wheels and tires usually doesn't do it. So as always, I've got a nice set of wild cards planned for this. And since this guy started uh, looking a little bog hoggish, king slingish, and then uh, getting this green tint to the paint along with the purple, kind of the paint shift, had got me thinking about a certain person um, in the 24 micro scene. Does a lot of comping and this thing started to uh, shape up to be more of a comp type truck. So for this third set, we'll be using some CCXRC pine tree inserts, but for what tires? So these are for Enjora type wheels, as far as the, I guess the OD versus the Trio, which are a little bigger. And then he recommends these for, guess what? His favorite uh, tire, the RC four wheel drive scrambler, and then uh, Trench Kings as well, that type of size. So this will be my first plastic uh, insert rather than a foam. So I'm very excited to try these. Like I say, this is, uh, this is Tony's comp combo here. And of course, we're gonna use his favorite tire, the RC four wheel drive scrambler. So this is the uh, X2 S3, super nice compound here, super soft. But uh, these are gonna be, I wanna say somewhere in the 61 range, somewhere like that. So not super tall, about uh, the same kind of size we've got on there now, so comparable. But uh, what's really gonna make this guy pop is the wild card wheels. So I got something super special I've been saving. So these are the V2 Maz Designs purple double stars. So these were from that first run. I believe he may have done a second run of these double stars, but uh, these have been sitting, waiting, and uh, I think this is the build. Since we do have quite a bit of purple, I think we'll uh, forego the rainbow look with this set and just uh, just pop the purple accent, I think. So as always, these do come with uh, scale hardware and a tool. So we'll be popping all that in to get a little more detail. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start turning some screws, get these guys mounted up. And of course, we'll come back and see what they look like. Okay, I wanted to take a quick look at this before I got it all mounted up. And like I say, I've never used any printed inserts before, but I believe the main two advantages are if you vent them and get water in there, it's not gonna degrade like a foam. And then because the print, they have no sidewall give here. So I think that's why a lot of people that do comps really like these. Gives you nice side hill ability. And then you see you've got kind of the tree head conformity and then you've got the softer spot of conformity. So 
really nice design, so it should work really well going over terrain, but again, give you that nice sidewall support on a steep side hill. So that's the differences between kind of your traditional foam. These will compress, of course, on the side and then just uniform around the ring, and these do degrade over time as they wear in and if they get wet. The other items I got on the table, of course, are the rims. So let's take a quick, close look at these. Just beautiful. So these have the V2 ring, and you can see that recessed serrated edge there. So it drops the hardware in a little bit more, and then the rings are not vented. So I'm gonna have to uh, pop a hole in the tires. So I've got my leather punch out here, which is super nice. You can select the size. I just use the smallest. Punch a hole in your tire before you get it mounted. Makes it super easy. And then for the uh, scale hardware, one little note here, I've already got plenty of these tools, so I've got one modified, but you wanna pop this in a drill, lean it up on some sandpaper and chamfer that edge to a point. And that will uh, keep from marring the ring because it is recessed with that serrated edge, like I said. So if you don't chamfer that edge, you're gonna scrape the finish off of the ring. So definitely do that. And other than that, the only other thing I do always, I don't think I mentioned, was uh, wash brand new tires with dish soap to get any mold release off. And it makes them nice and sticky. Good starting point. You'll notice that some tire brands are super greasy coming out of the bag, like Prolines typically. So definitely recommend cleaning them up before you start. So with that said, I'm going to get working here. All right, I got one mounted up and I wanted to point out a few things here. So uh, one nice thing is these are going to be a lot more comp set up here. You can see basically you got the whole knuckle in view because of the uh, negative offset of these. These Maz wheels are nice and uh, zero offset or maybe a little positive. So they basically sit over that knuckle. You can see the width difference. So the rear is sitting at five and an eighth with uh, these big 1.3s and power hobbies. So once I get this set mounted up, we'll measure that track width, but it ought to be quite a bit less than five and an eighth. And then uh, a couple of quirks mounting these up. These feel really good, but uh, it was kind of a struggle getting them on. And it's probably just due to the Maz wheel. I don't think these were designed for it. Um, I was thinking these Maz were interchangeable with uh, the Enjora rings but you can see there's a width difference there. So this ring is flushed out at the face and it's uh, there's probably an eighth of an inch right there left. So it's a little tricky getting these mounted and uh, what ends up happening is you get kind of a pillowed back face because you've of course got to put that purple full wheel in first and you've got to basically get the bead to seat but then press that purple wheel all the way forward to flush out this front surface because you need you need the ring and the wheel basically flush to tuck the bead in to that front face and then you get all your screws in and so when you're done mounting the back is kind of offset like this you get a little of that pillowing look but uh, it still seems to hold the bead just took quite a bit of pressure holding that wheel face tight while I got those first three screws in tightened down but uh, as you can see, it uh, seated up nicely. It looks great on the front. Of course, there's no pillowing because it is nice and flushed out there. And then on the rear, you can see kind of that pillowing wrinkle a little bit there. But like I say, it's seated and uh, the beads in there. So it, uh, it seems like these are gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish with the uh, other three. One thing to note, you can see these are pointed forward, the tread, these are directional, so pay attention when you're mounting them. You got two one way, you're gonna need two the other way. But uh, so far, so good. We're not even gonna start looking at them yet on the truck, but uh, let me get them all mounted up. We'll come back and take a look at the finished product. All right, here we are with the wild card set mounted up. And man, as always, these wild cards may end up being my favorites. It looks super good. And uh, I don't know if you guys can smell that. <laughs> That's the smell of scramblers in the morning. And I tell you what, nothing is better than a brand new set of scramblers. And man, they look the part. They definitely uh, feel super supple, really nice on the tread. Look at that. 
but then if you try to press them on the sidewall, they're like a brick in there. So really kind of a different experience here. I'm uh, excited to drive these, try them out. But as far as the look, the setup, these guys look fantastic. Let's get this guy in frame. So I'm really digging the purple, just, you know, simplifying it, really pulling out the purple in the frame and on the body. But uh, let's check these clearances. Look at that. With these guys sitting in so tight over the knuckle, they're actually gonna touch the shock there. So finally, I'm gonna get some uh, usage out of these hard park rotating collars. So they're actually gonna do what they're meant to do. And you can see that tire is definitely touching it there. So that is just perfect setup. We're uh, right at the link, looks like. So we're just kissing that link. And then uh, clear of the battery tray since the uh, wheel sits in. So you can see there's a big gap there. So plenty of clearance with this setup. And of course we've got miles of nose clearance over here. So no problem. So I think this is a really nice setup for kind of a comp style truck. And you can see this track width did narrow up quite a bit. So the front measured out at four and five eighths. So we gained about a half inch right there. And then the rear is just a tad narrower because there's no tow out on the rear, obviously. But man, super killer setup here. Really digging it. Good amount of flex. But again, with all this limiting, keeps this front nice and tucked. So I think that is just killer. So you know what's next. We're gonna get this guy on the scales, put both batteries in there, see where we came out with this set of wheels and tires, but I'm guessing it's going to be the lightest of the three. Well, turns out these are the lightest wheel tire combo of the three. So very comparable in weight to this OGRC wheel tire combo. These are about 41 grams and these guys came in about 38 grams. So they're equally weighted. So of course that's going to drop some of that front bias we had with the 1.3s with the brass rings. So back to the original kind of bias of uh, I think 5644 with no battery and then either battery in there pushes it up to 5743. So not bad at all, definitely a good front bias uh, with any set, but those uh, 1.3s just nail it at the 6040. So potentially if this was gonna be, you know, the only setup to comp with, may wanna add like a brass front diff cover, maybe swap out to brass knuckles, but you know, it's all dependent on how the thing handles, maybe great at 57.43. So anyways, at this point, we haven't even seen if this guy will run. So I think that's the next thing, gonna bind up these electronics, give this guy a little test, make sure everything actually works. Okay, back with a little bit of discovery here. So before we actually spin this guy up, I wanna go over a little issue here on the uh, steering that I ran into as far as setting up the geometry. So this took me uh, a little bit to finally figure out um, what the issue was, is I was getting far more steering on this side than this side. So I could actually touch the links with this tire, but pretty far from it with this one. And uh, what I eventually realized was it was the servo horn. So <clears throat> really you can see how this is horizontal here. This is uh, a plastic horn I swapped in that's longer than the stock horn. And you can see that here, it's quite a bit shorter, this aluminum mofo. So that was really the only way to give me more throw in this direction, because uh, you can see this guy isn't all the way up to the servo. With that short arm, it actually was at its max point up at the servo, couldn't go any further, even moving the link to the forward face. So it was just the limit of the servo. So right now you can see I'm actually at the links and I'm at the links with both tires. So a good uh, representation of that is this axle here. So these are stock axles, but they do have the XO CVDs in there. So you can see I'm right there touching the uh, axle fully maxed out. And this is a short arm. And you can see what I'm saying. It's right up here at the servo so that's the limit of the throw and it's the stop point anyways because of the hardware head under there. One nice feature of this poor boys 
RC servo. Let's see if we can get this to focus a little bit better. You can see that chamfer on the bottom edge in the center. So that allows a little more space for that hardware head to live at full throw right there. So uh, anyways, just something to know, you may have to swap out your servo arm. This side is not gonna be an issue, of course, because you don't have the servo housing above it. And this one is full throw here, but just something uh, to look at because you wanna get maximum potential out of these XO CVDs. I mean, that's the whole point of these guys is to be able to, uh, you know, get something like that out of your steering. So that's where we're at now. So that is perfectly set up, exactly what I wanted, except for I'm running a plastic servo horn, but in the, uh, the theme of Tony and CCXRC, I think he's a proponent of the uh, plastic servo horn. So I think that's fitting overall for the build. So with that said, I think now it's time to actually plug this guy in I'm going to tape the tires, get it on the stand, and we'll spin it up here and make sure everything is good. Check out the overdrive and go from there. We are ready for testing, but before I turn this on, got one little uh, last surprise for you. You may have noticed it already, haven't been really hiding it, but uh, you're definitely going to notice it when I turn it on. Well, I don't know, definitely the lights are on, but... Uh, for the keen eye up front, you can see a little purple glow there. So I've got some uh, five millimeter LEDs in there. And of course they look blue to the eye, but those are purple lights coming off of there. So again, thinking about Tony and his hatred of dealing with lights and especially lights on the body, plugging them in and out, messing with them at all. I decided I've got to have some lights on here, but I made them static always connected to the chassis, always plugged in, so really no hassle at all. So anyways, with that said, let's give this guy a little spin up here and uh, check this. This should be 23% overdrive, so I believe that is, what is that, five and a half maybe? We'll see. That's one, two, three, four, five, and yeah, about five and a half somewhere in that range. So it looks like the overdrive is working. It's about half pull on that ROP. In fact, let me spin this guy around so we can get a little bit better view of this ROP. So we've got the super slow creep, nice and silent. You can hear the wind chimes. Definitely got some top speed to it. And then of course, let's check out that steering. I don't even think I can run it and hit it at full lock because of this stand. It's got that much steering, but look at that, just insane. Yeah, we start to hit the stand. Let's see if I can hold this up maybe and check these from underneath. So I did end up having to back them off just a little bit from the links. But uh, let's see if I can hold this up here. There we go. Let me give this guy a little gas. So we start to get a little bounce. But they're still smooth. They're still going. A lot of that is me hitting the back tires on the table. It's kind of hard to hold and uh, spin it up here. But you can see, luckily those links have a little play in them. It's actually, the uh, this one looks like it's just clear. This one looks like it's just maybe able to tag it, but that is just great as far as steering. So super happy with that. Just make sure, of course, that your spinning motor is clear of wires, and that is the case here. But uh, looks like everything is functioning. Let's actually uh, let me tuck this down in here, pop the body on here. Get a little better sense of those rock lights, but again, it's kind of hard to see them in the light. But they're there. 
subtle little touch. I can't have any build without lights, but there you go. You can kind of see them in there. Another reason I liked to uh, leave this underside, kind of the uh, silver, I just backed it with the same silver I used on the sides. So it gives it kind of that reflective surface more so than just like a black backer. But I think it looks pretty good in there. It's something, it's some light. Let's get this tape off. And uh, boy, I can't get the tape off my fingers. Let's see if I can get it off this guy. There we go. So I think this is only at 6.5. I'll have to check. I may have to bump that up to 8.4. So it looks like we are clear of the shock collar unless we're probably at full twist compression, so we're missing it right there. And that one we're hitting it. It may depend, you know, sometimes you back up and you twist a little more. Yeah, it looks like we are actually getting it. So that's nice. We're actually using that shock collar. But look at that, that is just some massive steering. And that's exactly what you want from a comp truck. You want that control. So looks like everything's working. Next phase would be to do a little bit of uh, tabletop testing, but I don't even know if that's gonna do this guy that much justice, being how capable it is. I don't think my tabletop is gonna be that challenging. All right, some testing is better than no testing. Let's just get this guy climbing here, flexing out a little. Reposition a little. Watch these tires conform with these pine trees. Look at that squish. Nice. Nice stretch there up the ramp. These scramblers going right on up. come at it a little different here on the return trip. Let's see if these scramblers will get a hold of this plastic. Looks like it. The scramblers tend to get a hold of just about everything. I creep it down. reposition here. All right, a little better low down view here. Get this guy flexing right towards us. Look at that beauty. Take the flex ramps here. Check this guy out from the side. Very nice. Man, just beautiful frame, beautiful. change up here. See if we can climb this a little bit crazier edge. I feel like I'm getting a little right there, a little hesitation in that motor. It is spinning. Look at that tire wrinkle. Loving it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Getting that frame edge on the corner of the plastic is no good. I have to back it off. There we go. Just flop the weight a little. Get around that plastic corner. Up and over. Look at that. We'll 
creep it down. That steering Let's bring us right on down and right on back. Everything is uh, looking good. Back with a fresh set of wheels and tires and a few little tuning tweaks after that tabletop session. So honestly, I wasn't 100% happy with the uh, motor transition and the tuning of that. So I've been playing with that a little bit in the Fury Tech app and uh, we'll do a little, a little more testing and see what improvement was made there. I also started looking at kind of the side hill ability and kind of the, uh, kind of the bounciness of the shocks, the unloading back here. So you can see I put in a couple of limiter rubber bands. So they're going from the top of the shock under the frame to the top of these upper links. So it gives you that center pivot and uh, it also does not pull the rear end fully compressed, which uh, it was doing initially. I had the, sh the rubber bands just top and bottom each side on the shocks and that was just too much pressure there. So it was giving it a squat in the rear. And then another little tweak I made, if you look under there, I've got another set of magnets. So to give this body a little more holding power, I added another glued one on the rear of the body, and then I stacked a couple more thin ones, one on each side. And uh, that's definitely helping quite a bit. Not, uh, not gonna fully support these heavy set wheels, but uh, can definitely pick it up. If I start shaking it, it will drop, but much better hold than before. And the key thing is a much better hold just pushing up on the nose here if that gets caught. So it's still, you know, you still can definitely force it off, but better than it was, stronger hold. Definitely stronger in the rear now with two magnets. So a couple little tweaks there. So I think now it's time to uh, plug it in. But oh, one thing I forgot to mention, you may have noticed on the tabletop testing, I did in fact find a KTEC sticker. So they are now represented. And of course we had to add some CCXRC stickers each side there since we've got Tony's inserts and his uh, comp wheel tire setup or tire insert setup, I guess, on those purple wheels. And this is kind of turning into be a CCXRC Tony themed kind of truck here. So anyways, let's plug this guy in and uh, see if that transition is just a little bit better than it was. Trying to take out some of that stutter that was in there bring something over here to climb actually. So what I did was actually switch the motor configuration from Fury Tech's mini Komodo to just the regular Komodo. And then I bumped the punch up to four because I think it didn't have enough power coming out of that FOC. So let's take a look here. So we come out of FOC around 37%. So right there. So let's take this wall at FOC, kind of low speed level. See if this will just keep climbing it. Much better. So it took out so much of that little bit of stutter there that was, you know, happening at the transition point. And I kind of moved the transition point from kind of 30% up to about 37%. One thing I also forgot to mention in the post tuning was uh, actually took care of the battery tray edges. So you can see there, they're nice and chamfered along the bottom. So they actually work at full lock, full compression with these uh, big set of tires. So just perfect there. So let's see if we can come in on this just a little closer here. I can look down on it. Maybe take this body off completely. You kind of see that motor turning now. So nice and quiet.
perfect FOC climb. No stutter, delivering the torque. So much improved, definitely liking that much better. And then uh, got those limiters on the back. I'm sure that's gonna help right there. Nice. So I think now we actually may be done with the tabletop testing and tuning for this guy. All right, had to do one last tire wheel swap back to the originals. And we'll creep up this RTI ramp. Take a look at those rock lights. Man, those look good. I think those are coming off as they are in real life, but they look really nice. A little peek in there. So I think that is gonna officially be a wrap for this build. And uh, tell you what, I am super happy with how this guy came out. I think it just looks incredible and I think it's gonna perform just as good. So let's uh, get this camera up on a tripod and finish this guy out. Well, it's that time again. We're at that uh, double-edged sword of the build. It's a sad time that we're finished, but it's also a happy time because this thing came out fantastic. And I'm loving all three sets of wheels. Not sure which combo is my favorite setup on this, but uh, they all definitely have some unique properties to them, unique looks. Um, still getting used to the oversized 1.3, but I definitely love the uh, colorations of this guy. And it looks great on the tire, but uh, it's definitely uh, a big boy on the truck. The purple, I think, simplify it nicely and uh, work well with uh, tucking in on these wheels for more of a comp style setup and a narrow track width. And then of course, we've got the originals I started with, these nice rainbow OGRCs. So these look great as well. I don't think these are as much offset as these guys, so not quite as wide, but uh, just three great combos here. Let's get that guy posed up a little bit, but man, the paint came out just great. And again, that green was kind of a happy surprise there, kind of themed this down the uh, road of Tony and CCXRC, as well as kind of the happenstance uh, body cut, making this kind of look like uh, the King Sling or the Bog Hog here on the back. But man, I am just super happy with how it came out and the, uh, you know, the coloration of the chassis and the fact that you can see all of that and the motor from the side, I think is really cool. I don't think this is gonna be the uh, end all be all ultimate comp rig, but uh, it's definitely going to be, I think a capable comp rig. Truth be told, I would probably pick a different motor if I was just gonna be building kind of my version of an all out comp rig, but how could you not use the ROP with the purple of that frame and the fact that it is a MOFO motor, but uh, I think it's gonna do fine. I think I've got it tuned now for a much smoother transition out of the low speed. One big thing that helped that was bumping up the startup power of that motor to high. I think it didn't have really enough juice and like I say, the punch was turned down initially, so it just had a lot of kind of struggle getting from that low speed to normal. But uh, with those few tweaks, giving it a little more punch, a little more startup power, seemed to uh, smooth out that transition nicely. So overall, just super happy with this. So I think the uh, maybe the next step for me is to reach out and contact Tony at CCXRC and see if he'd be interested in an unsolicited uh, comp truck build to run. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun on it, learned a few things along the way. Surprisingly, I don't know everything, but uh, I hope you did as well. And like I say, don't know what's coming next, but you know, there's always something cool. Got a few in the works to finish, got a few new ones to start. So definitely stay tuned. And uh, until then, thanks for watching.